Hello and welcome to today's lecture on microstrip antenna array. In fact, in the last couple of lectures, we talked about different types of the feed network. We looked into series feed microstrip antenna array, then we looked at the corporate feed microstrip antenna array, then we looked into the combination of series and parallel feed. But let us just look at today an array which does not require any feed network as such. The feeding style is very, very different. So, let us start with the today. A topic is now space fed microstrip antenna array. In fact, uh, this is actually a much later version. In the beginning, we actually started with the rectangular microstrip antenna array. So, instead of using circular patches, we had used the rectangular patches. But I just want to tell you how we came with the space fed microstrip antenna array. So, actually just to tell you, so there had been uh, problems when you have a larger arrays which require large gain, that would mean really that the feed network becomes very complicated, the losses in the feed network become very large. So, during those days then we noticed there is a new concept came which is known as a reflect array concept. Basically, reflect array was the concept which was coined using reflector and array. So, in that what they had done just to give you the little bit background. So, for example, there is a reflector antenna. So, this reflector antenna would require a feed over here and then let us say it is a parabolic reflector. So, the feed will radiate and then it will go in the parallel direction or the signal coming from the parallel direction will focus at the focal point. When we discuss about reflector antenna, we will discuss this thing in more detail. But now the problem with this particular configuration is it occupies lot of space and especially for let us say satellite which has a relatively smaller size, they do not like this reflector antenna which occupies too much space. So, that is how the concept of reflect array came into picture where what they had done was they actually used the concept of that microstrip antenna array, okay, but instead of feeding all the element, what was done was that let us say you excite this array using this let us say a, it can be microstrip antenna feed or horn feed and this one goes over here. Now, it is in plane. So, what happens from here to here it will see one distance, but from here to here it will see slightly different distance. So, what they had reported was that they actually use the different phase shift. So, that this one receives a different phase and the element here are designed such a way that it gives us the relative phase shift. So, we looked into that, it looked very interesting thing. We started seeing how it is, but then I noticed that the efficiency of these antennas is not very good. And then we also read that they were talking about the blockage with this particular feed point. So, we came out with the concept that why feed like this and then this whole thing is radiating. So, why not we feed the this particular array from the down below and we will have a ground plane and this will radiate and it will radiate further. So, there is a no aperture blockage at all. So, that was the thought process with which we started working on it and then let us see what we got. So, just to explain the concept here. So, here is a ground plane. Okay. On this ground plane, we have a, this uh, microstrip antenna which is fed over here. It is only one of the patch which is being fed. And now, this patch will radiate in this particular direction, which is the broadside direction. So, now suppose if we have number of elements and I am not right now saying rectangular or circular, it can be any of those configuration. So, we have a number of elements over here. So, now from here to here, you can actually see that this distance is H 2, but for this element here, the distance will be H 3. So, this distance is more than this here. So, that means this element will receive additional phase delay compared to this particular element. So, that additional phase delay can be compensated by taking this dimension slightly shorter than this particular dimension over here. And by doing that, one can actually design this particular array. So, here just to mention in the beginning, we had taken a rectangular patch here or circular here and then we had used let us say a 3 by 3 array in the beginning and then we went on to use very large array also. 
but then there was a problem in using the rectangular array because in the rectangular array if you just imagine there is a rectangular array like this 3 by 3 element. So, if you can just imagine that then this element this one and perpendicular here and here they will be at the same distance from the central point, but for that 3 by 3 array the diagonal elements will actually see different phase difference. So, their dimensions also will be different. In fact, we did do lot of work on that, but then we felt this is a better configuration. In this particular case what we have? We have a central element here and these 6 elements you can call them they are placed in the hexagonal formation or you can even say circular array also. So, we have given the name of this as 1 B 70 where 1 patch is at the bottom and the 7 patches are on the top. So, here what we need to do the central patch will set the reference and these surrounding patches will get additional phase delay that is to be compensated by reducing their dimension. In fact, uh, after this 1 B 7 T we had also done 1 B 19 T also where 12 elements were put along this here, but let us first understand the concept. Okay. So, in this particular case we had designed this particular antenna and you can see that bottom element radius is about 13.1, central one here in the top is 13.1, but the side one are about 12.7. Inter element spacing is taken to be about 33 between this and this, which will be same along all the directions. And the air gap between the this and here, it is very very important that this air gap should be about lambda 0 by 2 or it can be n times lambda 0 by 2. Now, this is very very important because only then the radiation in this direction will add up with respect to this over here. So, this distance is a very very critical component in this entire design and just to tell you how we did the realization here. So, over here one can actually see uh, it is very difficult to make out here. So, there is a small patch over here, this is the ground plate, there is a small patch here which is corresponding to this here and that is only patch which is being fed there. One can see all these 7 elements which are printed on this substrate only on one side, the top side can act as a redome and these are supported by 4 dielectric screws, so that you know they can be suspended in the air. So, let us just see the results of this particular antenna. So, the antenna was designed in the C band which is from 4 to 8 gigahertz. So, here you can see that resonance frequency is around 5.7 or so and that is the VSWR2 line. You can see that the bandwidth of this particular antenna is relatively small and even the gain pattern is like this here which shows relatively small bandwidth. You can see corresponding to this the peak gain is around 17 dB or so and the gain variation you can see would be something like this which would be about 1 dB gain variation. So, but this particular thing has a nicer thing also that uh, radiation pattern is relatively symmetrical you can see and side lobe levels are very small. You can see that over here side lobe level is less than 20 dB, over here also it is less than 20 dB. So, why side lobes are less? I will give go back here. Let us just look at this in one more time. So, now if look think about this patch here, the maximum radiation is in the broadside direction and this one will have a something like a beam like this. So, that means this element and this element will receive slightly less power compared to this element over here. So, that means it will provide a natural tapered distribution and hence side low performance will be good. So, this configuration has an advantage of a natural tapered distribution. Now, as I mentioned we have just seen the results of 1 B 70, we have made it to 1 B 19 T also or it can be expanded more and this kind of an array is extremely useful especially for high frequency. Now, just to remind let us just see here this antenna was designed around 5.7 gigahertz and the spacing 
over here is about 25.85 millimeter. But instead of say 5.7, let us say if we go to millimeter wave in the order of say 35, all these dimensions will be reduced correspondingly and that height will reduce to almost close to 5 mm or so, which is still fairly compact and also this does not require any feed network. So, this is a very good array, especially for higher frequency, because at higher frequency this total height will be relatively small and this can be extended to much larger array and thus we can also get a natural side lobe level performance also or reduction in the side lobe level. The only disadvantage with this particular configuration is it is relatively narrow band. So, there is a lot of research potential which can be used to improve the performance of this particular array. But there are several other advantages are there. Let me just go back. Now, this particular element actually can do wonderful thing. For example, if we use this particular element and we feed here and suppose here, that will be suppose if we feed one angle 0, this also one angle 0, then we can actually get a dual polarized microstrip antenna or orthogonally polarized microstrip antenna array, which can be used for MIMO application or this element can be, which is this bottom element can be circularly polarized antenna, then all this effect will be a circularly polarized microstrip antenna array. So, in fact, we will take one example where we will see an example of orthogonally polarized array and we will see that it becomes very, very complicated feed network, but this space fed antenna array can really solve many of those problems. So, let us just look at another possible configuration. This is a series fed array of gap coupled rectangular microstrip antenna. So, we have already seen this particular configuration. This configuration is known as non radiating edge gap coupled microstrip antenna. And then we have used this broadband antenna array in the array form. I actually just want to mention to you people that this particular er element here that is a non radiating edges gap coupled antenna. I had done this work in my PhD thesis work. So, I had finished that PhD work in 1983. So, what I am telling you is about 33 year old story and in fact, we did publish papers in 84 and 85 based on these configuration. And in my thesis during those days, I had mentioned that these elements can be used in an array form to realize broadband microstrip antenna. But then the thing which I recommended in 1983, finally I restarted the whole thing 30 years later and then we have not designed. So, here is a uh, another array same as this here and these are coupled with the U shaped you can say bent network here. So, that is a series feed, we could still get impedance matching by feeding almost close to the edge over here and these are the simulated and measured results. You can see that the results are fairly good agreement and the bandwidth obtained here is from 5.535 to 5.84 and that is about 5 percent bandwidth we get it from this particular case here. You can also see that this is the gain plot you can see that the gain variation over the bandwidth is relatively small and the maximum gain of the antenna array is about 13.4 dB. So, just to refresh uh, this particular antenna as such, just these three element would give us gain of about somewhere between 8 to 9 dB. So, we could get a larger gain by using these elements. Of course, uh, we have done only three of these broadband thing, this concept can be extended to larger antenna array and thereby realize broader bandwidth. Now, we will look at the another configuration. This is configuration is electromagnetically coupled dual polarized microstrip antenna. First, we will look at the concept here, then we will use this particular thing in an array form to realize larger gain. So, let me first tell what is the objective of this particular thing here. So, here the requirement was we wanted to have a broad band 
antenna, but which should have a very good isolation between the two orthogonal feed point. So, this is the configuration which we reported for the first time. So, what we have here? So, we have a one feed network over here. Let us just look into it what it is. So, this one if you look at here that is a micro strip line which is coupling with the top patch which is actually suspended in the air. So, this is we have taken as a square radiating element because we wanted orthogonal polarization at the same frequency hence we took a square patch. And now this feed line here is getting electromagnetically coupled to this particular patch over here. Now, here if we take this particular thing little down below here, so then there will be coupling and if we take little bit above there coupling is slightly reduced, but the thing is bandwidth also increases. Since our requirement was broadband, we chose little larger air gap and because of that what was happening then we coupled this here and uh, because the this gap, gap was too much input impedance realized here was relatively small. So, we used a quarter wave transformer to obtain 50 ohm matching here and then this one here is placed orthogonal to this one here. It is important to have a small gap over here okay, so that improves the isolation between the two orthogonal feed point over here. Okay. So, now let us just see the results of this particular concept. So, here is the fabricated uh, element. In fact, this particular thing we had designed it around 2.5 gigahertz frequency. So, you can actually see that this is the picture of the bottom layer where this feed line as well as quarter wave transformer is fabricated and there are two of them and this is the complete assembled antenna you can actually see little bit of this patch here because that patch is actually printed in the inverted suspended configuration. So, basically it is printed underneath this one here. So, when we take a picture from here we are not able to see the patch clearly, but you can actually see little bit shade of that. And this particular antenna has been designed you can actually see here that the bandwidth for VSWR less than 2 is almost 13 percent it is from 2.375 to 2.725. So, I just want to mention here. So, this actually covers lot of different applications. So, for example, a Wi Fi application would be from 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz which is covered by this antenna. Then lower band of WiMAX that is from 2.5 to 2.7 gigahertz. So, even that has been covered by this particular configuration here. And now the beauty of this particular configuration is the isolation, the isolation between these two and this is a measured value. Okay. So, the isolation over the bandwidth over here is less than minus 40 dB. You can actually see that reference value is minus 20 which is over here minus 30 minus 40. So, that is the minus 40 dB line. You can actually see that in this range it is minus 40, but it is even getting below 50 dB. So, it is a very good isolation value as I mentioned earlier our requirement was better than 30 dB here we achieved 40 dB and any isolation better than 30 dB is considered good 40 dB is definitely very very good. And I also want to mention so this particular array concept you can actually give two different names one is of course orthogonally polarized micro strip antenna. We will talk about the array in the next slide, but then it can also be actually nomenclatured as MIMO antenna. So, basically multiple input, multiple output and for MIMO antenna it is very important that the isolation between the two feet should be very, very good. So, now we will extend this concept to a relatively larger array. So, let me just go one by one. So, that single unit which we looked into it. So, now that has been extended to 6 by 6 element array and instead of designing the array at 2.45 this array is designed at 5.8 gigahertz which is the WiMAX higher band and also this band has been declared free in many countries of the world 
and it is of course declared free in India also. So just to tell you, so in India all these uh, frequencies usage are decided by WPC, Wireless Planning Commission and Wireless Planning Commission comes under the umbrella of DOT which is Department of Telecommunication. So you can go to their website and you can even download what are the frequencies used for what purpose and what are the free bands. So that will help you to design your next antenna or your next transceiver or transmitter receiver system. Okay. So now coming back over here, the so 6 by 6 antenna array is used in the electromagnetically coupled configuration. So just from here, you let us come over here. You can actually see that this is the feed network and you can actually see little bit carefully if you notice here that what we have here that these are the line here. So there will be patch will be sitting on top of this here. So you can see that there is a small line quarter wave transformer, small line quarter wave transformer. So on this one patch will be sitting there and then that is the same thing over here and then you can see that this is getting replicated here and to all of these things we require a feed network. So feed network is shown over here. You can see that it is a fairly complicated feed network and this network has been printed on the reverse side of the ground plane and the plated through holes were connected from the bottom side to this particular feed network so that a proper power divider takes place. So basically over here what we have actually done if you look into this here, so there is a power divider network. So since we have a array of 6 by 6, so we have used a power divider first 3 by 1 power divider and then each 3 way power divider has been divided into 2 so that we get overall 6 by 6 power divider. So this is the complete assembly unit and if you actually look into here, the total thickness is relatively small. You can actually see that the total thickness is still close to about SMA connector only. right? So now let us just see what are the measured results for this particular array. So first let us just look at this is the VSWR and since there are two ports are there, port 1 and 2 which are basically the two orthogonal port here. So if we now see this is the VSWR2 line and if you look from the bandwidth even from here, this bandwidth is anyway from 5.3 gigahertz to almost 6.8 gigahertz. So that is the bandwidth of about 1.5 gigahertz which is extremely high that gives us more than 25 percent bandwidth. So that is the VSWR bandwidth. Let us just see isolation. As I mentioned the requirement was less than 30 dB isolation over the band and you can see that we got a S21 less than minus 30 dB or isolation better than 30 dB right from 5 to 7 gigahertz and in between a lot of places you can see the isolation is almost 35 to 40 dB below. Now so that is VSWR, this is isolation but these are not the only two important thing. We should also look at the gain and the pattern stability. So here we can see that we got a gain of about 22 dB okay? and in this particular case one can see that if we just look at a 21 here, so that is about here. So the gain variation which is less than 1 dB and that is over a very large bandwidth of 1 gigahertz. Okay? So that means this is a good antenna array as such which has a fairly uniform gain over the bandwidth and also which I have not shown here but the radiation pattern. The radiation pattern also is fairly uniform over the entire bandwidth because once you know that if the gain is relatively constant that means the radiation pattern is also going to be relatively same here and you can see that for very large range the gain is very close to about 22 dB and in fact this actually covers various bands just to remind I mean majority of the time people are looking at 5.8 gigahertz the bandwidth required could be 1.5 here or maybe people looking in the 5.4 gigahertz band and that will also be you know covered in this particular array. So one can actually see that this particular array is very useful to cover various band and of course you can modify this for any other frequency band also. 
So now let us just go to the next topic which is phased array antenna. So what is the concept of the phased array antenna? Now again you will have to go back to the lecture which I talked about in the linear antenna array. For linear antenna array we had mentioned that if all the elements are fed with equal amplitude and phase then the beam is in the broadside direction. However, if we change the phases between the element then the beam can be scanned in this direction or this direction depending upon how you vary the phase. So, the phased array antenna is actually extension of that only. So, let us just see here we have linear arrays of 8 elements. So, what we have here these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 element and first let us look into here. So, these 8 elements are fed using a corporate feed here. So, this is the amplifier. So, from here it is divided into 2 then this is divided further into 2, then this is divided into 4. So, that is a 8 element array, but in between what has been added these are the phase control values which are added over here. So, for example, if all the phases are 0, it then it will be in the broadside direction, but suppose if the phase is if I start this as a reference. So, if this is 0, this is minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40 minus 50 minus 60 then it will be have a beam shift like that and that beam shift can be obtained again from the array theory where we had seen that psi is equal to 2 pi d by lambda cos phi plus delta. So, for desired angle phi we can actually calculate what should be the value of delta and then you can do the beam scanning. Now, the only thing over here is that when you want to do something like this let us say now you want to change the beam from broadside to let us say 10 degree, then you want to shift to 20 degree, then all the phases to each element should vary accordingly and that poses lot of problem for larger array. Imagine if we have a 8 by 8 array, so 8 by 8 array would require total 64 phase control even if one is reference it requires 63 phase shifter. Now, think about if we have an array size of 32 by 32, which means 1024. So, you need that many different phase control devices. So, these are the challenges. In fact, many a times what people do, they actually use 2 by 2 sub array, so that lesser number of phase shifts are required. And again, there is a lot of research required for designing phase shifter. Phase shifters can be analog phase shifter or digital phase shifter. In case of analog phase shifter, one of the device which can be used is maybe a vector diode can be used which is given a voltage and by changing that vector diode correspondingly phase can be changed. Or in the case of digital majority of the time they use pin diode switches. So, by switching those pin diodes you can actually change the shifts in steps. Okay. So, when you change those phases in step, sometimes there is an error known as quantization error also comes into picture. Now, this was the general phased array antenna. Now, let me just talk about another thing. It is an active phased array antenna. If you compare this with the previous example, actually the additional thing what you see over here is this block over here and these are amplifier but I will just mention little bit more about it. So, what is being done over here starting from here power is getting divided to various ports and then these amplifiers are used and this is actually a very very important thing especially today when we want to transmit let us say very high power through the arrays. Now, either we use a very high power single source or in this particular what we can do we can actually use relatively low power active sources here. So, think about an application suppose we have a 32 by 32 element array. So, 32 by 32 means 1024. So, if we feed even 1 watt to each module that 1000 element really would mean 1 watt corresponds to 1 kilowatt of power and if we have a 10 watt module to each one of them that means we are transmitting 10 kilowatt of solid state power amplifier. Now, however, there is a one additional thing I want to mention. The, what is you see over here is a one sided that means 
this configuration can be used for transmit purpose only but if we want antennas also for receive purpose also so in that case for receive purpose simple amplifier is actually replaced by tr module where t stands for transmit r stands for receive so transmit receive module in fact you can actually in a very simple think that transmit receive modules are nothing but bidirectional amplifier with proper isolation between the two so by using this particular think scheme here one can use multiple tr module and some of the tr modules may even consist these phase shifters also and sometimes they may even consist uh, attenuators also for amplitude control so that we can control the side lobe level also and in fact many a times these active phase array are also used suppose you are using for a particular application and there may be a jamming signal coming from some other direction so by doing a proper phase control one can actually put a null in the direction of the jamming signal so there are many applications of antenna array in fact there are several books are there on phased array antenna so i want you to once you start working on these wonderful array techniques you will actually see that there are so many applications but yet there is a one major limitation i want to mention majority of the phased array antenna today are fairly expensive so majority of the time it's being used by the defense forces all over the world right now commercial use of these phased array antenna is relatively very less so i hope that one day when all of these thing can be integrated and the cost of producing these arrays become less then these can be used for commercial use so for that you need to work on this come out with the novel design there is a lot of research possible in this particular area okay so with that in fact i am going to conclude the microstrip antenna itself as well as array so we started with microstrip antenna array then we looked at broadband microstrip antenna array then we looked at the compact microstrip antenna then we also looked at circularly polarized and even tunable dual band microstrip antenna then we talked about various types of microstrip antenna array so we now conclude microstrip antenna and in the next lecture we'll talk about helical antennas and we'll see how helical antennas can be used in different modes to realize different kind of radiation pattern so with that thank you very much and see you next time bye